and indeed international crises and, and the level of, of an ummah, we all see that we are in a crisis. This is just the naked reality of what's happening today in the world. And every time there is a new crisis, we all, mashallah, grope for answers and solutions. And we all now become the judge, jury, and executioner of those who cause the crisis. So we are guided by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam as the most perfect human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent human beings as messengers and not angels. One of the many reasons is that human beings will relate to human beings, the highs and lows the emotional highs and lows, the spiritual highs and lows. <coughs> Prophet وسلم, would sometimes tell the Sahaba that if your level of spirituality and iman is always at the level when you are with me, the, then the angels will stand in line to shake your hands. Meaning, maintaining and sustaining that level of Iman is not within the scope of a Muslim. So the Prophet wasallam knew and understood human emotions, human sensitivities, as he understood human failures and human frailties. This is on one side. On the other side, he was also the lawgiver. He was the Sharia. Through the Quran and through the Sunnah, his own Sunnah and through his own Ishtihad, he was the lawgiver. So in the community, in society, <coughs> if someone is now guilty and found guilty of a <coughs> crime that is also a sin, or a sin that is also a crime, then he guided us also in that. That what do you do? So now there are two problems. One is that in uh, civil order, we have a code of conduct. That this is a code of conduct in your private life, in your public life. No one is supposed to be wronged. La tudlimuna wa la tudlamun. That don't cause injustice to others. And don't allow injustice to be brought upon you. Don't victimize others and don't become a victim. Both. Now this is a civil code. Now this is a code of conduct. So if you have now Islamic law and Islamic Sharia, you will follow the rules of Islamic Sharia. And if somebody is, God forbid, found guilty of such a crime that becomes a, that's a sin, that becomes a crime, then you go through the due process and you levy any punishment that Islam says you should levy. This is very clear. We have no doubt in that. Every Muslim believes this. And even if you are not a Muslim, you will believe in law and order. You will believe that there must be no chaos and no commotion on the streets. There must be no confusion about what the law is. And you must apply the law wherever you are in such a way because the law is designed to keep peace and law and order in every community. It is not designed to cause more corruption, more chaos, and more confusion. This is the role of the Prophet Muhammad So on one side, we are obligated to follow the Prophet in his behavior, in his, in his ethics, in his manners, in ibadat, in how we make dua, and how we conduct ourselves as not only good human beings, but uh, good Muslims. This is now the role of ethics and morals and what we know as adab. On the other side, the Prophet ﷺ came to ensure that any Muslim who is wronged or is guilty of a wrongdoing himself 
should go through the process of being tried and judged in this world. As Muslims, we all believe only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate supreme judge. That is why in Surah Fatiha we always say Maliki wa He is the owner of the day of judgment. So what is now the moral value of this? When you have Sharia law and when you have American law or the state of Illinois law, what is the role of law when you say Maliki wa How do we apply this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will judge all. Allah save us from his hisab. So Allah make our hisab. In fact, Allah uh, allow us to enter Jannah without any hisab. We don't want to be ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows everything. In this world, we don't know everything. Nor are we obligated to know everything. The truth may reside elsewhere. So we have to go through a process. That is called the system. The system of governance, the system of law and order. The Prophet wasallam said that be careful. If I give a verdict to one of you in my understanding of your elaboration of the case and through your eloquence and representation of the facts, you convict, you convince me that you are telling the truth and you have a proof then be careful. Because if you know that you are lying, then I would, would have appropriated for you, I would have given you a coal from the coal of hellfire. Meaning there, even the Prophet ﷺ said, it is quite possible that through your bayan, through your articulation, and through your evidence and now presentation, I may not know the whole truth in this world, but this is what I'm obligated to do. I look at the facts, and based on the facts presented to me, I will give a verdict and a judgment. The final judgment is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Maliki Yomiddi. In this world, I will render a judgment according to my understanding and the knowledge that is presented in front of me, the evidence that I have in front of me, and you be careful that you don't take the right of your brother through your presentation. Now, even here you have ethics and morals. That despite judging and ruling, this is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <coughs> Despite his judgment and his verdict, against another Muslim in the community, he is still cautioning the community, hey, be careful, because I don't know everything, nor am I obligated to know everything. So it could be that one of you will be wronged through my judgment, not because I am wrong, but because the presentation was so superb and spectacular that I have to rule according to the law of what's in front of me, not according to whatever other means. Now, Jibreel Islam could have come on every occasion and said to the Prophet Wasallam that this is the truth and this is falsehood. But Allah didn't do that. Allah did not send Jibreel in every case to the Prophet Wasallam. Why? Because otherwise no one would be able to follow him. How are the Sahaba going to do this? That in each case now, we need Jibreel's assistance. We need kashf. We need ilham. It was impractical. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the Prophet wasallam, judge according to what you see in front of you. If you are right, alhamdulillah. If you are wrong, then that's not on you. You will not be held accountable or guilty of that. And that's how the Sahaba also judged in their courts, and that's how we also judge. So it is quite possible, in fact, probable, sometimes in a system where you are training people to lie, understand, <coughs> as part of your job description. Where is the justice in that? But nevertheless, there's a system, there's an order. People follow that, and there's no chaos, and everything works. But the ultimate judgment is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's <coughs> refuge in being judgmental, even though the facts may tell us this is the truth. 
This is the portion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yes, if someone is guilty, then albeit, that's fine. But for the community, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his sunnah and the Sahaba in their seerah and the Ummah in its civilizational history never condoned that you go out on a limb and you promote and propagate what is now wrong. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةَ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرِ Those who love that fahisha spreads in the community, immorality spreads in the community, that gossip spreads in the community, rumor mongering now is justified in the name of social media and freedom of information. This has not been condoned. Neither by the Quran nor the Sunnah. Yes, one guilty party may be guilty. And we accept, acknowledge, and we make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. If the victim is there, then justice must be served to the victim. And we must not underestimate the dua of the victim. As the Prophet said, Ittaqu da'at al madlub Fear the dua of a person who has been victimized. Because there is no barrier between that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes straight up to him. So we are cautioned to fear the bad dua, the curse of any victim. Not just a sexual crime victim. Any victim. It doesn't matter. At the same time, the Quran and the Sunnah and the seerah of the Sahaba and our Muslim history tells us that we should not promote that in the community by gossiping about it. By discussing this over the table. <coughs> Everywhere you look, people are now discussing one thing. As if it is the only thing that concerns the Ummah. It is a tragedy. It is a crime. It is a sin. But make sure that you don't incur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath and his punishment by assuming that you are God. Nobody is God. By assuming that you have the right to render judgment. Because neither neither you nor the courts know the facts. <coughs> we don't know the ultimate truth. 100%. So we are obligated to follow the law. That if, ha- if something has gone to the courts and trial... And there is something there, and according to the law of the land, someone is proven guilty, then that is fine. You rest. But as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to the Sahabi, and as Isa السلام, said, when he brought into faith Jesus, what did he say? When someone was being stoned for adultery, both Jesus, Isa السلام, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said what? That, that the one who has not committed any sin throw and cast the th- first stone. The Prophet وسلم, said this to the Sahaba. That whoever has not committed any sin, although this man has been proven guilty in the court of Sharia in front of me, the one who has never committed a sin will be the one who now casts the first stone on this guilty person. <coughs> this is called ethics. This is called Islamic civilizational values. This is called following the Sunnah of Muhammad wasallam. This is called understanding the Quran. This is called being a Muslim. Whatever we have unfortunately become indoctrinated with through social media and mass media and everything else in the world, that this must be promoted, that is wrong. That was never the law and definitely it was never the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was never a civilizational value 
we do not expose ourselves nakedly in front of the whole world. Let's go Oriania. Let's go shameless behavior. If there is a, a crime and the courts are dealing with it, then so be it. May Allah accept whatever we do for his cause and for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we must be mindful that when we say this is the truth, then the truth comes from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It does not come from social media, it does not come from mass media, it does not come from anything except the mouth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa ma yantiqa anil hawa He does not speak from his whim and from his fancy and desire. Everything is revealed to him. This is the seerah of Muslims, that we must appreciate how we respond to crises. No one is immune from sin. Any one person can commit a sin, and everyone does. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Kul ibn Adam khattawud. Every son of Adam is going to make many, many, many mistakes. Khattawud. Many mistakes. If someone has been wronged, then the wronged person must be able to seek justice according to the law, and justice must be served. At the same time, when justice is served, you do not go around the block displaying this guilty person on a donkey. That is haram. We don't have that in our Sharia. We say, clothe the person, cover the person. This is called satar. This is called covering. And the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever covers another Muslim in this world, Allah will cover him on the day of judgment. Oh. You want Allah to expose your sins on the day of judgment? Then be my guest. Then follow the social media, follow any media, follow any other culture except Islamic culture. So if you want Allah to cover you and your mistakes and your sins on the day of judgment, which we all need, May Allah cover us all in this world and in the world hereafter. This is Allah's satr. When Allah's satr is now removed by the Muslim community, Allah, Allah, Allah. La hawla aqoodu la billah. This is not a sign of taraqi or advancement or progress. It's a sign of degradation and disintegration. This is what it is a sign of. So if we want taqwa, which is the basis of this case that is happening here in this community, that you need taqwa and you need to stay away from haram and you must not commit any sin and you must not victimize innocent people, then this is part of taqwa also, that you do not go out on a limb to expose your mistakes and sins in front of each other and definitely not at all in front of non-Muslims. This is our pride. This is our civilization. This is the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, you're talking about. Those who are guilty should be punished. May Allah forgive them also. And those who are not guilty, may Allah remain, make them, and show them that they are innocent. But we must not put fuel into the fire. This is my nasiha to me and to all of you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his afiyah, for his comfort, for his protection, for his satr, for his covering. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps this ummah together in this world so that we may enter Jannah together in the other world through the qiyadah and leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Ameen. Ameen.